In all my 27 years on the force, I've just never seen violence like this. Los Angeles just isn't the place where violent things happen. Certainly not in the world of kids' television. Eat your pancakes. But we want to watch TV! Why would the TV want to be watched by a bunch of ugly- Hello! La 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 Let's have fun! It wasn't just a children's show. I think audiences of all ages love Blah Blah the Clown. This guy was the definition of overnight success. I mean, his show was motherfucking iconic. What time is it? Yeah, time! Yeah! But even the most beloved icons can have a dark side to them. At, at first I thought, how could anyone do this? And then I thought, probably with a knife. I was like, there's no way. There's no way my best friend could be a serial killer. Do you ever get angry, boys and girls? Sometimes it can be difficult to do the right thing. But you mustn't listen to that anger. For an angry clown is a clown nobody wants to love. <laughs> Three more bodies were found last night. The victims' faces were painted like clowns. Ladies and dicks, we're dealing with the goddamn psychopath! I didn't know what hell was until I met Blah Blah the Clown. You do not want this man entertaining your children. Officials say what was written in blood were the words of a real doo-doo mouth. Look at him! That look! Like the face! The goddamn crazy person! My son was a difficult child. He'd just look at me with those big, dumb eyes, like staring into a pair of assholes. And he didn't know how to be a star. I was a goddamn star. This was taken 15 years ago. And how old are you there? 11. Tell me what you just said. I said you're a bad actress. Well, I don't know where his anger stems from. Go to your room, ugly! Fine, bitch! I'll go to my room and I'll do drugs and lose my fucking mind! Why can't you lose your virginity? Eddie was like a brother to me. Uh, we met back in high school. Oh, I hated his fat little friend. Dude, your mom's pissing in the sink again. This is my palace! The two of them were pranksters. You know the type. The kind you just want to fuck in the ass because they're so cute. But then you remember, hmm. They're full of shit, because they're fucking assholes. I wanted to be a director, he wanted to be an actor, so we were the perfect duo. You've been humping up Desmond. Desmond's my brother. I knew you'd fuck your brother. Since I was seven. Ah. 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 Well, the joke's on you, bitch, because I took your pregnancy test, and guess what? You got a baby in your body, and that baby is mine. How was that? That was one of the best performances I have ever seen in my life. This performance is trash. Why would you show me this? You know what? Fuck you, Mom. Eddie was never able to make his mother proud. That's not how I taught you to wash your asshole. And when she crushed his dreams of being an actor, that's when he said, I hate where, you where and I'm gonna run away from, from home. How about that? I'm not even buying this performance. Yeah, well, you better buy I it. I will not. Oh, well. Eddie wanted me to pack up my bags and move to Hollywood with him. Oh, you pack your bags and move to Hollywood with me. Good idea. We drove to LA and shared a small studio and let me tell you, times were tough. I, I couldn't even land a job shooting porn. Yeah, I'll climax when you hold that fucking camera straight. Well, that was very rude. And Eddie sure as fuck couldn't land an audition. All right, I'm, I'm Eddie Oswald, and I'm auditioning for the role of... Kid with Cancer. Cadaver Six. Ethnic Janitor. Yeah, yeah, can you not look at the script, please? How the fuck am I gonna know what the lines are? Don't bother going in there. They're just gonna tell you no. Eddie wasn't the best at taking rejection. We'll call you. Yeah, they call me yeah, the fuck you will. But one day, he wasn't rejected when he came in and auditioned for me. Clive Butler, founder of Butler's Sweets and Such. I was just two months away from rolling out my yummiest confection yet, the Blah Blah Bar. I just needed a young, fresh face to be the clown on the package. 
So, uh, you ever play Clown before? I don't think we're up for the same role exactly. Richie Goldberg for Blah Blah the Clown? That's me. All right, come on back. No, I, I'm Richie, I'm Richie. When I saw how passionate he was about clowning, I, I simply had to have him audition. I'm sorry, what the fuck am I auditioning for? It's a spokesperson for a chocolate bar we're rolling out next month. I thought this gig was to host a kid's TV show. Oh, it is. As soon as that pink makeup went on. I'm Eddie Oswald reading for Butt Butt the Clown. No, oh, that's not his name. I knew I'd found the face of my new candy. You want the part? I got the part! So we rented a shit little studio, sillied it up, and before we knew it, Quiet Time with Blah Blah the Clown was LA's number one kids show. Morning, children! Hello. I'm having such a great time! Or at least a genius marketing strategy disguised as a kids show. What's candy? Blah Blah Bars are a treat for you! If diabetes exists, why is it so hard to spell? Though there was one thing that heavily concerned me. The fame was getting to him. It, forget about these kids, yeah. it's about me. Yep. Okay. I was the uh, stage manager of Quiet Time. Working with Eddie has been the worst experience of my life. And I lost my virginity to a jacuzzi. What are these two fuckers even doing here? Are your costume designers? Then why am I wearing shit? Eddie hated that the costumers had more style than him, but they were gay and married, so you know they think outside the box. You know what, just get out, just go! Not even God can love you. Honestly, fuck that guy. What? Everyone knew Eddie had anger management problems. Why am I the only shit stain on this goddamn set who's a fucking professional? Roll it! Hello, kid! He was becoming unhinged. What time is it, kids? Diabetes! Diabetes exists, you idiots! It became apparent we could no longer maintain a studio audience, so I brought in Wendy, a, a puppeteer. Oh, she was such an artist, making all sorts of this and that's to put her hand up. Another day in puppet paradise with Blah She is so bad at her job. Eddie and Wendy really hit it off. Probably a little too well. Before long, I believe blowjobs were occurring even during production. So tell me more about Mount Rushmore. It was built in 1927. Uh -oh. <laughs> <sighs> the fuck are you all looking at? It was obvious. There was some favoritism happening on set. The fucking knees are killing me. We're almost done. Can, can someone get her a pillow? Like, no, not you. You get the fuck back over here and fix this mop that you were paid to make. Look, no one likes wig makers, but Eddie didn't have to be a dick. You can't say dick. Oh, he's being a real penis. Ow, ow! What the fuck is wrong with you? How much are you getting paid to be on my show? How much are you getting... I'm sorry, did that hurt you? No. <laughs> I can't believe this shit. She is the only one in this whole room you treat with any sort of respect. It's I don't No, no, I've had it. I don't care who the fuck you think you are, but no one talks to me that way. I am finally going to say what everyone in this room wants to say. No one likes working with you, and in this town, that shit matters. Okay. No, no, you got to yell at me, now it's my turn. Tomorrow when I walk on this set, I want to be treated with respect. You know what? I fucking hate clowns. It's bullshit. Maybe if one of us had gone with her, you know, made sure she was okay, that wouldn't have been the last time we saw her. 34-year-old Deborah Tomlin was found brutally murdered in her apartment last night. Fingers are pointed at the host of the show who was allegedly the only one who had the motive to kill her. Well, I think the evidence is stacked against him like some lumberjack pancakes. There was absolutely no evidence that he wanted to kill Deborah. I'm gonna fucking kill you, Deborah! I don't care, that footage isn't proof. And they can use this as an admission in court! My name is Detective Penelope Pennybrook. My colleagues call me PP because we don't waste time. We're gonna need all these fingerprints cataloged by 11.30. My skills are unparalleled, which is why they called me to investigate Deborah's death. I'm on it. Immediately, something about this crime scene rustled my jimmies. She was beaten to death in the face with a hand mirror. Her body was found on the south side of her kitchen, which is a strange way to murder someone in a room full of weapons. What's strange is that there was no sign of forced entry or that anyone was even with Deborah that evening. So I spoke to the last person who saw Deborah that night. Well, I got home that night around 7.30, I believe. Saw the bits trying to unlock a door. You clown! You know what? Fuck you! I was just starting to feel good about my makeup! 
that was the last time I saw the bitch. I later I went home and had to pay my rent on Cam. Oh, thank you, Dirty Tony sixty nine, for your hundred dollar tip requesting me to give you extra credit on your math final. God damn it, Tony Ramirez! I know it's you. After digging a little further, I unfortunately found the video in question. And this is why girls won't suck your dick. If you look in the background, you can see clear into Deborah's apartment at the time of her death. New evidence has surfaced this morning. Proving Deborah's death to be a suicide. Looks like the only thing this clown was guilty of was being a poopy dick fart hole. Well, he's innocent. It looks like you were wrong. Well, I've been wrong before, Shira. Okay, well, coming up, if you eat this story... And I'll do it again! I knew that Eddie had something to do with her death. I just needed him to slip up. And then, February 27th happened. Eddie has some of the crew over at his house to celebrate his innocence with a game night. His lack of compassion was the first red flag. I mean, who celebrates after their colleague has just died? We're hanging out, we're playing some board games. The Chinese checkers particularly set him off. So we switched to Jenga, but that was even worse. Board games are pretty stressful, if you've ever played one. I busted out Twister. At approximately 7.30 p.m., a testicular mishap occurred over a game of Twister. That's when Eddie finally snapped. I remember him saying, ouch, my balls. And he started to get a little upset. Tensions are heated. Eddie accuses Rick of intentionally sabotaging his nutsack and throws him and his husband out of the house. Daniel tries to calm him down. The killers never calm down. Eddie can't contain himself. He follows Rick and Ronnie outside. Unfortunately, the home had no exterior surveillance, so what transpired between them is still unknown. What is known is the horrific aftermath of the next morning. I was taking out the trash around 10 a.m. when I noticed there was this big unopened package right by the door, and it didn't have a shipping or return address on it, just an image of a clown in what looked like blood. And I thought to myself, I don't think these are the lima bean balloons we ordered. I neatly rushed over to the studio. No! When I opened the package, I forever scarred myself and my staff. For inside the package was Rick's head. And this time, I had a hunch it wasn't suicide. Because how did he pay for shipping? <laughs> 